Hi, my name is Bina, and I am a nutritionist for the ACL Grant Virtual Smart Living Initiative at the New York City Department for the Aging. I wanted to share with you some tips on how to conduct live cooking demos based on the tips that my team and I gathered from our experiences. Having support from a moderator before, during, and after the demo makes the process smoother and more successful. Therefore, there are separate videos for the dietitian and for the moderator on what steps they'll do and how they work together. This first video for the moderator will cover what the steps the moderator can do in advance to prepare for the virtual cooking demos. Step one, schedule it. For the first time that you schedule the cooking demo via Zoom, set it up as a recurring meeting so that the Zoom information will remain the same. This step is just for the first time you do a demo. For subsequent demos, you don't need to create a new Zoom meeting and you will be able to copy the same Zoom information onto the flyers. Step two, select specific Zoom settings. A, security. When scheduling or editing a Zoom meeting, you will see options under security. Passcode and waiting room will automatically be checked. For cooking demos, the waiting room option should remain checked. Leave require authentication unchecked because if you do check it off, it will require many more steps for participants to join the demo. Step B, advanced options. You will also see a section on advanced options towards the bottom. Click on show to see all the options. Among the options, two of them should be checked. A, allow participants to join any time. This one is checked off automatically. However, if you have a waiting room, participants will be placed into a waiting room before you admit them. Mute participants upon entry is another one of the advanced options. This will mute participants as soon as they join. So you wanna make sure that allow participants to join any time and mute participants upon entry are both checked off and then click save. Step three, prepare a flyer. The flyer should include the name of the recipe, date and time of the scheduled demo, language the demo will be conducted in, the Zoom information to log in, a list of ingredients, interesting facts about the recipe, sponsoring entities, and disclaimers. The ingredients are listed so that participants or centers can cook along at the time of the demo. The Zoom link on the flyer should be clickable, meaning that when someone clicks on that link, they should be taken directly into the demo. Check that the link, meeting ID, and passcode listed on the flyer is correct. The last thing that you want is for a large number of participants to enter the wrong meeting. That has happened to my team before. Step four, research information on the recipe. Prepare canned questions and answers on the recipe. Do adequate research on the recipe from credible sources. It can also be helpful to look at the information from unreliable sources as that may be what participants will often read and ask you about. Look up the correct pronunciation for words that are not familiar or the names of foods that are unfamiliar. If the recipe requires any equipment, like a blender or a food processor, find information on alternative ways the dish can be prepared without the equipment, considering what participants may already have at home. For example, when making frozen fruit bars, assume that some of the participants will not have ice pot molds. Therefore, be ready to explain how the recipe can be prepared without ice pot molds. Step five, prepare a recipe card. The recipe card should include the name of the recipe, sponsoring entities, ingredients, directions, and nutrition information. Canva can be used to prepare the flyer and recipe card. Canva is always free to use for everyone. You can choose to upgrade to Canva Pro or Canva for Enterprise for access to premium tools and content, but it might not be necessary for creating just flyers and recipe cards. Step six, manage attendance. Create a Google Sheet, form, and link to collect attendance information. Having a link to a form that centers attending the demo can fill out 
makes it a lot easier to collect attendance information. Step seven, pronunciation. It might be helpful to practice pronouncing names of older adult centers since the names of older adult centers will be announced during the shout outs after the recording. Step eight, watch past demos. If this will be your first time moderating, watch previous demos to learn how to moderate one. Thanks for watching this first video for the moderator, which covered the steps the moderator can do in advance of the demo. See you in the second video for the moderator, where we'll cover what steps the moderator can do one to two days before the demo. Mm -hmm.